Well, hi there. Almost five years ago, we released our first ever video on this channel, Top 5 Reptiles for Beginners. To be considered for that list, a reptile had to meet five requirements. It had to be readily available, affordable, easy to house, easy to feed, and fun. Well, after five years, I want to revisit that list. You've now had five years to learn how to use the internet and to save up some money. So I'm going to get rid of the first two requirements. Just because you might be a new keeper, that doesn't mean that you can't find a breeder online, and it doesn't mean that you can't afford something that costs more than $50 for the animal. So readily available and affordable will no longer be factors. It must be available. In fact, it must be available captive bred. But to make this list, it must not be very common. Also, I'm not going to recommend any animals that cost over $1,000, but they don't need to be super cheap either. That said, to be a good beginner reptile, it needs to be easy to house, easy to feed, and fun. And one more thing. To make this list, it needs to be an uncommonly kept pet reptile that is, in important ways, a better pet reptile for beginners than one of the reptiles from our first list. So this is a list of five uncommon pet reptiles that are better than the top five reptiles for beginners. First on our list are the Antaresia pythons, like this Western Stimson's python. These guys have a long list of pros. First of all, these are the smallest true pythons on the planet. Imagine if a reticulated python and a carpet python had a baby and it grew up to be the size of a garter snake. They are very hardy. They're fantastic feeders. They're very easy to handle as long as you avoid that feeding response. Unlike most smaller snakes, including the corn snake, these guys are not quick and darty. They move slowly and deliberately like other pythons. They are tiny and subsequently easy to house, feed, handle, and everything else that goes with keeping a snake. It just it really doesn't get much easier than this. And being Australian, all of them that you will find are captive bred. But they do have some cons. Obviously, it's a snake, which is a deal breaker for some. They eat rodents, though they will readily take frozen thawed rodents. And they love food, which is a pro, unless they mistake you for food. So tap training is definitely the way to go with these guys, and almost any snake for that matter. And like everything else on this list, you can't just walk into a pet store and expect to find one. This one comes to us from Australian Addiction Reptiles. I've followed them for years, and they are fantastic. They specialize in Antaresia pythons, as well as many other amazing Australian species. So you can get one, just not necessarily in your local pet shop. Next on our list are collared lizards. Collared lizards have a ton of pros. For starters, captive bred individuals are just very personable. They're a lot like bearded dragons to hold, but on a smaller scale. Bearded dragons on a smaller scale will be a common theme for these guys. Bearded dragons were the species I was most reluctant to put on the first list. They were the most difficult and expensive to keep reptiles on that whole list. They made the list because their personality makes them worth it. Well, imagine that personality but even more beautiful, and with easier and more affordable care. BAM! Collared lizards. Like beardies, these will eat some vegetation, but it doesn't make up a large percentage of their diet as it does with beardies. This means that you don't have to stock veggies all of the time, and you don't have the smells that beardies can produce. They do eat a lot of insects, but still not as many as beardies, so that's awesome. But they do have some cons. While not as large as beardies, they still need a big enclosure. While not as hot as beardies, they do need a hot basking spot and high-intensity UVB. They do eat a lot of insects, which means you need constant access to feeder insects. They're like bearded dragon light. Next on our list is the Dumeril's boa. This is genuinely just a better ball python. They have many pros. They are a snake that is big enough that it's impressive and not likely to be injured or lost while being handled, but not so big that it's unmanageable. They're beautiful. I honestly think they're one of the 
prettiest snakes, at least in terms of pattern that there are. They have that same relaxed, deliberate personality as ball pythons, maybe even more so. But unlike ball pythons, they eat like boas. They also don't seem to have the same sorts of shedding issues as ball pythons. So this is basically a snake that is around the size of a ball python, perhaps a bit bigger, with some of the best features of ball pythons, but without all of the worst things about ball pythons. But they do have a few cons. Their size can be highly variable, and this can make it difficult to know exactly what to plan for. They eat rats, and rats are cool. They're still snakes, but the fact that they don't move much can make them a great snake to get you past your discomfort with snakes. And they love food. So again, tap training is a great idea to avoid mistaken identity when getting them out of the enclosure. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who hopefully one day will send us to Madagascar so we can film rad stuff like these guys in the wild, chameleons, lemurs. It would just be a dream come true and Jason's down. Jason, Jason wants to go. So let's do it. Next on our list is the best pet lizard that there is. That would be the green or emerald tree skink. This is the only animal on this channel that I have ever declared to just be the best one that there is full stop. Seriously, if there is a better pet lizard, please tell me what it is. It's difficult to imagine a more amazing pet lizard than this. If I ever wake up from a dream and discover that the emerald tree skinks don't really exist, I'll be sad, but I'll be like, of course they don't exist. Why would a little lizard be like that? So let's talk about the pros. They're small, but robust. This means that they can be housed in a reasonably sized enclosure and they don't cost a fortune to feed. That enclosure can also be beautiful as they're a semi-arboreal tropical species that won't dig up and destroy a beautiful planted enclosure. There is a reason I picked these guys for the snake discovery enclosure build off. They're so great to feed. Like crested geckos and gargoyle geckos, they do eat some insects, but they also love crested gecko diet, the greatest thing any animal can eat. And they'll take fruit as well. So you have lots of options for feeders. You need to get insects sometimes, but when you don't have any, you have loads of great and easy options. But the main reason that I adore these little lizards is interacting with them. The small lizards from our original list all tolerate handling well. Crested geckos, gargs, and leopard geckos all can be handled safely. They put up with it, generally. Beardies are the kings of putting up with us. I scoop you up. All right, I guess we're doing this. I put you on my shoulder. Okay, I guess we're gonna hang out here for a while. They might drop a huge smelly poop on you while they're there, but they will put up with you handling them for a long time. There is a reason that they were used as living props and holes. Well, these guys are the opposite of that. They put up with nothing. You can't go in and grab an emerald tree skink. They'll run away, but they love people. All interaction is on their terms, but jumping on you and your friends is what they want to do. They will run right past food to jump on a person. It's unreal. In my opinion, interaction with an animal simply can't get any better than this. But they do have some cons. They do need some insects, and that can be a pain. They need low wattage UVA and lower intensity UVB basking lamps. But gosh, it's hard to find a lizard that is much easier, and I don't know of one that is more rewarding. This is the best, and it is appropriate for a beginner. Just get one that is captive bred. They breed easily in captivity, and now that people know about them, more people are working with them. And last but not least is my current choice for the best pet snake. Right now, if I could only keep one snake, it would probably be one of these, a super dwarf reticulated python. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of the super dwarf in that title. Reticulated pythons are the longest and among the most massive of all snakes. Reticulated pythons are not a good pet for the overwhelming majority of keepers, but it is only their size that's a problem. Otherwise, they're a fantastic pet snakes. Well, there are islands where the reticulated pythons stay much, much smaller. These are the super dwarf reticulated pythons. So what are their pros? 
They are, in my opinion, the perfect size. This one's only a baby, but they don't get ginormous like their mainland cousins. They're big enough that handling them is a very immersive experience, and they're not very delicate, but small enough that you can handle them safely even if you're alone. Their personality is a lot like a corn snake. They're more interactive, but their girth is more like that of a ball python when they're fully grown. But they eat better than ball pythons. Frankly, they eat better than corn snakes, and maybe even better than boas. They like food. They're also small enough that they eat readily available feeders and not farm animals like their mainland counterparts. But they do have some cons. While these are tiny reticulated pythons, and they're light-bodied and small even at 8 or 10 feet, telling your landlord or significant other that you want a 10-foot snake puts up some red flags. If that is too big, you might want to take a look at the other snakes on this list, especially the Antaresia pythons. But if 6 to 10 feet is your upper limit, keep in mind that if you go to the wrong place, you could be sold a mainland retic billed as a super dwarf. This is why I get mine from Reach Out Reptiles, because I know they can be trusted 100%. Also, because mainland retics are banned in many places, these often are banned as well. While these aren't giant snakes, they do need the largest enclosures of anything on this list. But suitable enclosures are available from Toad Ranch and other places for not wholly unreasonable prices. And again, this is a snake. It eats rats and loves to eat. Tap training is really important here. But these are fantastic snakes. And that makes five. These are honestly not only five of the best pet reptiles for beginners, these are five of the best pet reptiles that you can get no matter who you are. They're fantastic. But there were a lot of others that are just as good that almost went on this list. Should we make a sequel? What do you think we should include? Please let me know down in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Next on our list is the Dumat Brevillables Boa. <laughs> oh, you're so great. Why is she so great? Look at this. So great. So, so great. So great. Hey. I'm eating this crack out. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat this crack out. Oh, oh, oh. God, you're going down, crack out. You're so cute even when you kill stuff. <laughs> That's my hair, Chris. Oh. You have one out of place. Still, still. Nope. still. Barely. <laughs> Wardrobe. <laughs>